Welcome everyone, I'm Phil Rowley, and welcome to today's show. Today on The New Fly Fisher, we're coming to you from the Narrow Hills area of northern Saskatchewan. We're guests of White Swan Lake Lodge, and we're touring the area exploring the local trout lakes. There's a bite in the air, the leaves are turning, trout should be strapping on the feed bags, it's shaping up to be a great show. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. It's unlike any place I've fished before, and the fishing is on fire. Oh, that's a big fish. Got a oh, it's a giant. Holy smokes, that's a big pike. Nice fish. Big laker. That is a gorgeous fish. They're aggressive. They're angry. That is a fish of a lifetime. On today's show, we're based out of White Swan Lake Resort, roughly 259 kilometers or 160 miles northeast of Saskatoon. The lodge is easily accessible by vehicle and offers camping, cabins, restaurant, even a small store. It is the perfect base of operations for our Narrow Hills adventure. Uh, White Swan Lake Lodge has been around since the 60s. We took over in 2018. We currently have five cabins and four rooms available in the lodge uh, for accommodation rental. We have 140 seasonal campsites. Some are wilderness and some are electric. White Swan Lake Lodge offers a full service restaurant and lounge. It has a miniature store with uh, all the amenities plus gas. We have stock lakes. We have the main lake with lake trout and pike in it. We have walleye lakes all within a 20, 30 mile range. We have winter fishing on the ice and snowmobile trails in abundance. Joining us on today's show is Colin Regeer, owner of the Northern Fly Fisherman. Colin has a wealth of experience fly fishing Saskatchewan, especially the Narrow Hills region. The Northern Fly Fisherman is a locally owned fly shop located in Martinsville, Saskatchewan, catering to the prairie fly angler. We've been in operation since about 1988. I'm currently the third owner and we are here to service all of your fly angling needs. Within the Narrow Hills region lies Narrow Hills Provincial Park. The park was originally established in 1934 as the Nipawan Provincial Forest. It was then subsequently renamed Nipawan Provincial Park. The park's name changed once again in the 90s to Narrow Hills Provincial Park as we now know it today. Narrow Hills Provincial Park, I like to use a six weight rod, anywhere from a nine to a 10 foot. Um, line selection should be floating lines for casting indicators, intermediate fly lines casting in close uh, stripping in streamers or woolly buggers and right down to a type 5 sink or a faster sinking line to dredge the bottom. Fishing season typically starts in the narrow hills mid-May uh, once the season opens and ice is off. Um, and generally last uh, spring season is good up until mid-June to late June. Uh, summertime can slow down with the heat of the summer and then it picks up again in fall uh, up until ice on generally end of October. About 20 lakes that are all stocked with uh, the five species Saskatchewan stocks featuring tiger trout, rainbow trout, brook trout, brown trout and splake. The fall is prime time to fly fish any productive lake. The lakes of the Narrow Hills region are no exception. During the fall, as dropping air temperatures cool the water, trout begin cruising the shallows. Here they hunt and feed aggressively, building the fat reserves they will need to get them through the long cold winter ahead. During the fall, your time is best spent prospecting and exploring the shallow shoals, the edges of drop-offs, 
and weed beds, as this is where feeding trout should be. As the major hatches of the season are complete, focus your efforts on suggesting staple bread and butter food sources, including leeches, scuds, coronamid larvae, immature damsel and dragonfly nymphs, and minnows if present. During a warm afternoon, you may even get the good fortune to experience the excitement and chaos of a water boatman or backswimmer fall. Whenever you visit a new lake, it's always a good idea to check out what food sources might be on the menu. An aquarium net, whether it's a longer pond style net like this or a cheap dollar store uh, aquarium net, a little short one, invaluable tool. All you want to do is sweep through the weeds along the shoreline and see what's living there. So let's give it a try. First of all, we've got something big. We've got a nice crayfish here. Common inhabitant in many lakes. Obviously bass love these things and trout love them too, particularly the smaller immature crayfish. I think I saw a water boatman in there. So we've got some food sources to imitate. Something to look around. Not a lot of samples, but in the fall, as the shallows cool, the bugs start moving out into deeper water. Whenever you're fly fishing lakes, it's important to understand the seasonal changes lakes go through each year. This is particularly true in the fall season. Over the summer, the lake has been quite warm. The upper layers are warm. The trout have been deep near the thermocline, trying to find any oxygenated water they can. As the water temperatures cool due to the reducing air temperatures, trout are gonna start sliding into the shallows where they're gonna feed aggressively. So you're gonna to wanna to target the edges of shoals, onto the shoals, and they can be way into the shallows, chasing minnows, scuds, immature dragon nymphs. At this time of the year, they're hungry, and just about everything is on the menu. In the fall, you will be primarily targeting the shallows. As a result, your fly line selection should consist of a floating line for suspending flies under strike indicators, along with slow sinking hover and clear intermediate lines for cast and retrieve presentations. These lines will share the brunt of your presentation work. Slow sinking lines allow you the freedom to cover shallow shoal areas using slower retrieves with a reduced risk of hangups. This approach allows your presentation to match cooler water temperatures, which may slow the activity of feeding trout. There we go, fish on, fish on. Just using the fish are kind of, fishing's been kind of slow. So when the fishing's slow, you got to slow down too. So we are, oh, it looks like a brookie. So we have been fishing slowly. So two ways of doing that, a strike indicator, of course, or I'm using a uh, slow sinking hover line. It sinks at about one inch per second. So I can let that fly sink down, in this case about 30 seconds, so that's at about, just about three feet. I've got a little bugger variation of mine, a little variation on a thin mint, just a peacock curl body, mottled marabou tail, brown and olive, homered with a brown hackle and this little brook trout. It's got that stuck right in the snout. So we've seen fish rolling and that's what we do. This is the two fish rule. You see fish rolling once, pay attention, twice, Get over there and see what that's all about. We did, and within two or three casts, we've got ourselves, oh, it's actually a rainbow, dark little rainbow. Plump little guy. There she is, beautiful little Saskatchewan rainbow. Dark colors. That's the dark water. There she goes. So now it's like shampoo. Rinse and repeat. We found fish, found a method that's working. We're gonna repeat it, catch some more. So we're using a steady hand twist here with pauses. The premise being the movement of the fly draws their attention. And when I pause it, they have a chance to pounce on it. And you always want to be irregular and erratic because everything that they feed on doesn't swim in a robotic straight line. They stop, they start, they take rests, they change direction. So you want to make sure you do the same with your retrieves. 
Oh, I got tapped. Here we go, fish on. On the Thin Mint variation again. Just a generic, suggestive fly. In the fall, your hatches of the season are, are pretty well done. It's a nice warm day. We could see some boatman or back swimmer migration flights. But for the most part, they're in here in the shallows, feeding on whatever they can. So suggestive flies, oh, he's gone. But suggestive flies that represent leeches, scuds, dragonfly nymphs, immature damselfly nymphs, those kind of things are probably gonna work. These fish are voracious in here and they're gonna feed. As trout are usually in an opportunistic frame of mind, suggestive patterns are excellent fall choices. The Narrow Hills lakes were no exception and suggestive flies served us well. Some of our best patterns included my thin mint variation, flycraft fullback, and balanced leeches in a variety of colors including brown and olive. Whoa! That was a good hit. Oh! <laughs> you whacked that thing. You think a fish that hits that hard? Well, all we're doing is a slow hand twist, letting it sink probably 30 seconds. Because we've got these fish up at the surface, that's a good indication they're not very deep because obviously you can see them at the surface. So one of the most important things in any still water situation is the depth of your presentation. And once you get that depth tuned in, you should start catching fish on a regular basis. There we go, fish on, fish on. Just felt them there, and when you're fishing sinking lines, keep retrieving. Don't do the dry fly hook set because the, the line itself will muffle your set. Whereas if you just keep retrieving, that fish is gonna turn and take the fly into his mouth. This one's got it right in the snout. Looks like another nice little plump rainbow. If I could get coordinated and net him here. Another plump little Saskatchewan Narrow Hills rainbow. See, he's plump, so lots to eat in this lake. So we'll get a hold of him, so we can see show him for you. There we go. Here he goes. You know, one of the frustrations of casting and retrieving is line management, because as you bring the line back, it tends to wrap around your feet, around your boat seat, around everything where you don't want it to go. Well, you've got your landing net right here. Your landing net makes a great stripping apron. You just gotta place it where the line can, can be, and just literally drop the line into that net. And your line will be nicely gathered and your frustration level will be non-existent. So remember to use your landing net as a stripping basket or a stripping apron to keep your line under control. Whoa, that was a good hit. Stripping them in, just the slow hand twist. Match your retrieve to the water temperatures and the fish activity. So we got a little bit of both here. Oh, it's a little bigger one. A little bigger fish this time, which is a good deal. Into the net. Doesn't want to be let, he doesn't want to let go. There we go. Nice, well-conditioned Narrow Hills Ring. So let's show you what we're using. Very suggestive fly, a thin mint variation, woolly bugger basically. We've got 8-2X hook. It's hard to tell, but that's a barred marabou, brown and olive. Peacock curl body, brown hackle, black nickel bead on the front. Just to give it that jigging action. They could take it for a leech, dragonfly nymph, dark colored bait fish. To them, it just looks like food. This location choice may seem a little ironic. With all this lake to explore behind us, we put the boats in, started to move out, idling out, and we saw fish moving. We circled around them to get in the best casting position, started casting, started casting fish. So when you see fish move, regardless if they're two miles down the lake or two feet out from where you launched, 
always want to stop and cover them. Don't think all the best fishing is at the far end of the lake. Often, it's right where you launch. Always at the end of the retrieve. Slow rod raise. Fish the hang. Let that fly hang there. Pause at the surface. Check it for any weeds, of course, and more importantly, see if the fish has been following, because you can get a lot of fish to eat right at the end of the retrieve, because they follow it in. And then when you pause it, they can have it. So Colin, as it said, you know, these little bays can be magic. And what we've got here is quite deep out off to our right. It falls off 17 into 20, 25 feet of water, but this shelves up into about seven feet of water. We've got weeds in here. This is a perfect little plateau, a shoal for these trout to come out of the deep water and feed. So hopefully we can uh, see if this will all come together and we can take a few fish out of here. Oh, well, we could see what Colin's got. Not very big. Boy, on the, get the net for you, my friend. Good fish on the brown. Oh, nice little rain there. So, Colin, you got five species of fish they stock in these lakes? You that got is rain correct. Ones like this, what else? We've got splake, brook trout, brown trout, and tiger trout. That's a great mix. And in this lake, we've got uh, brookies and rainbows. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. I'll let you do the honors. Okay. Another one on there. Oh, he whacked it hard. Not as beautiful little silver rainbow. Plump, well fed. Probably wishing he didn't eat the thin mint. It's just a little candy. And the fly pops out as soon as I get them in the net. Narrow Hills, Saskatchewan Rainbow. Flies out already. You know, if you're having a challenging day, one of the best ways to catch fish is to cover as much water as you can. And there's two basic options. You can cover water by trolling, or you can cover water by fishing from a drifting boat and the boat's drift is controlled by an underwater parachute we call a drogue. And there's two main styles. There's a conical style drogue, or the one I have is this European paradrogue. It's a big rectangular drogue that when I throw it in the water, it's got attachment cords on it, and this fills and inflates with water on the upwind side of the boat, and that slows and controls your drift. Because if you don't use a drogue, the lighter bow is always going to want to spin downwind. And if you've got two anglers in the boat, you spend more time fighting and dealing with the boat than you do with fishing. And fishing lock style allows you to cover water and always present your flies to fresh fish because you're drifting onto the fish as opposed to trolling, where you tend to drive over them first with the boat, your pontoon boat, and the flies follow. And there's a risk you could spook them. So when you set this up, you throw it out, let it inflate, It'll drift, it'll set square, and you just cover water. You can even adjust the ropes one way or the other, and that will allow the boat to, instead of drift perpendicular to the wind, to actually crab on an angle. And depending on which side you set to crab, this will allow two anglers to cover a shoal or likely looking structure to the left or right of the boat. Once you're drifting, Fly line choice does come into it. Because you, as soon as you cast, of course the boat is advancing on your fly line, you're generally going to use sink rate lines maybe one or two times the sink rate you'd normally use if you were anchored. Because as soon as those flies land, you've got to stay in touch with those flies. So typically you'll cast out the line and flies will land, and you'll start a slow hand twist just to gather the slack in to stay tight to your flies so you can allow them to sink. You always want to be staying in touch with your flies, A, in case a fish grabs the fly on the drop, or B, to avoid deeply hooking a fish, because if a fly falls through the water with slack on it, a fish is going to put it in its mouth, 
feel no resistance, and there's a chance that fish will swallow that fly deeply, and you'll get them stuck down the throat, and that's not good for catch and release. You'll end up having to cut the fly out. You're also probably going to use rod weights a little heavier, so I tend to fish six and seven weights when I lock style, because there's more casting involved, and simply the, the tool is better suited for the job than using lighter weight rods. So the next time you're struggling to catch fish from an anchored position, consider fishing from a moving boat, lock style, to cover water and always present your flies to fresh fish. I think that's a fish. Yep, that's a fish. Well, there's one, there's others perhaps. Ooh, this is a nice big rainbow, yeah. Beautiful rainbow. Eat that thin mint bugger again. You whacked it. Just a slow hand twist. Whoa! He's not happy. He's not a dwarf either. <laughs> That's a nice fish. That is a nice big rainbow. That's a couple pounds, at least. <laughs> That's a slab. That's why you come to Saskatchewan. Hello. <laughs> That's why you come fish the fall. The fish are big. They're in shallow. And they are aggressive. Well, the boat's out of the water on the trailer. It's time to clean it up, pack it up, get it all back in the truck for that long drive home. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode, learned a little bit more about the charms fall fishing on lakes has to offer, and particularly these lakes in the Narrow Hills area. I can't thank Colin from the Northern Fly Fisher enough for sharing his wisdom and knowledge on this trip, as well as White Swan Lake Lodge for providing such a great base of operations as we explored the lakes in the Narrow Hills region. For more information on this show and other shows in our informative series, don't forget to visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com and be sure to check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Tourism Saskatchewan, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,